What is going on guys? It is Sam back with a brand new video today and I've been getting a lot of questions about this video right here. You know, what kind of lenses I used, what camera settings I was using, what direction I was giving the model and how I pulled off some of the shots. So I thought I'd make an in-depth breakdown video about this film and put it online for you guys to watch. Before I get into it, I'm gonna quickly run down all the camera gear I used and the different settings I used. I obviously used the Canon 1DX Mark II and I put it in the 120 frames a second slow motion feature, which is 1080p. From there, I also had the camera set to a faithful picture profile and I just turned the sharpening down a little bit but left all the other settings the same. The contrast was standard, saturation was standard, and color tone were all standard. It was just the sharpening that I put down a little bit because I add that back in post. On the day, I shot with three different lenses. So I used the Canon 16 to 35 millimeter f 2.8. I used the Canon 50 millimeter f 1.2, and I used the Canon 100 millimeter f 2.8. IS. Alongside those, I used the Manfrotto monopod and a Glidecam HD 4000 with a little bit of handheld mixed throughout there. So let's start going through this film and I'll keep pausing and going through the film sequentially to kind of explain some things. So this opening shot right here. So this is a shot that I visualized as soon as I met Paige. She has these amazing eyes and I wanted to show that in the film. So this camera move was really simple and so was the direction, but it was just something I visualized and wanted to execute, which is a really important thing. You need to have the vision in your head of what you kind of want before you just start randomly shooting things. Now, I mean, you don't have to go extensively and start storyboarding things out, but you need to have a good idea of the kind of shot before you start shooting. So with this one, I just had the camera on the monopod with the 16 to 35 millimeter lens. And I did a simple move of just pushing in like this. With the Canon 1DX auto tracking feature, I was able to keep her in focus without having to pull it myself. I just touched on her face and pushed in and it keeps her in focus for that whole movement. In terms of directing the model, I wanted her to do a similar movement to what the camera move was. So I basically just asked her to, you know, start with her head down and then look up and run her hands through her hair, which, she definitely nailed and it came out exactly how I visualized. So let's move on a little bit. Um, most of my shots I shoot in sequences. So if you don't know what a sequence is, it's basically multiple takes of the same movement from different angles. By doing this, you have a lot more wiggle room in the edit and you can cut together some very different creative and unique shots to help keep the story moving and keeps everything fresh and exciting. Basically, all of these shots were on the 50 millimeter 1.2. I shoot pretty wide open most of the day and I just jack that shutter speed up super high. I know people are like, oh, you gotta keep your shutter speed at double your frame rate, but with run and gun shooting, it's a lot harder. And with slow motion, it's not really needed too much, which is what most of these films are for me. This was handheld on the glide cam. I just held the glide cam and kind of held it. And then we cut to the next one, which is also 50 millimeter, probably around F1.2, F1.4. And I'm just hand holding it again, getting the next angle. And then a lot of people have asked about this shot right here. So basically you start at the end point, you get your focus and then you go back out and then you push in like this and stop when she hits focus. And because the slow motion is so slow, even if she's in focus at that end point for half a second, that equals like two seconds in the edit, which is more than enough. From this sequence, you can also tell how I like to film, which is backlit. Backlighting does a couple of things for these model shoots. One, you get these really nice flares coming through, but also you get the hair illuminator, which helps bring them out from the background. So going back through the film, from here, you can tell that my direction has been to set up the backlight. Basically, I've told Paige to, you know, look this way, and that will then set up the next shot to be backlit. So this shot is simply just to establish where we are, but as she looks to the right, which is what I directed her to do, we now are in a backlight kind of setup. In terms of composition with this, I have just used some foreground to create some depth. Um, and then the backlight helps to separate her from the back here. Her hair is super bright from the backlight. Your eye instantly gets drawn to her, which is what you want. The flare also inadvertently 
is like a leading line to her because you, if you look this way, your eye kind of instantly gets drawn to where she is. So moving on, this is 50 millimeters again. Once again, backlit. The sun in California is really weird in terms of how it bounces around in the lens. Um, I didn't use a lens hood or anything. That's what kind of gives it this washed out look from shooting backlit. So all of these shots are just handheld with the 50 millimeter 1.2. And in terms of directions with these, basically I just pick a spot that is good lighting for what I like to shoot. Because Paige is a professional model, it makes it super easy. I kind of just put her in the light. You know, I can just be like, do your thing and then she can focus on being a model and I can focus then on getting awesome camera shots. So yeah, once again, all 50 millimeters, I'm shooting pretty wide open. You can tell by the shallow depth of field, you know, this eye is out of focus already. So this is, yeah, at like 1.2, 1.4. My shutter speed is just insanely high. And you can tell by most of my shots in terms of composition, it is pretty rule of thirdsy. I kind of just put them to the edge of the frame. Once again, here, similar to the first sequence, using this palm tree as some depth. And once again, see, she's backlit here and just exposing for the face, not caring that I'm blowing all this other stuff out. Shooting at 1.2 does give me this awesome bokeh. And that's why I love shooting wide open because it just blurs that background out so much and looks gorgeous. In terms of this, I'm exposing majorly for just her normal skin tones, not caring that this is blowing out here. Once again, composition kind of just to the edge of the frame a little bit. And as you can tell, like there's three shots for this little sequence kind of thing. With this sequence, I'm back on the glide cam and this camera move is very similar to this one back here that I push in. So basically I'm on the glide cam on the 50 millimeter again at 1.2. I pick my end spot, focus on it, move away and then count in the action. So ready, three, two, one, go. Paige would do her action and as I come in, and hit that focus, the slow motion takes care of the rest and I know I've got that moment for the edit. Bam. And then before it, I keep pushing and go out of focus, I cut. And once again, the sequencing. So this is on the, the monopod and this is actually on the 100 mil now. What I love about the 100 mil is just how it compresses the background in. I actually use the 100 mil not as a macro, I use it more for just the, the look it gives. Um, you'll see when I put it on the glide cam later how much it makes that background whiz pass, which is kind of like a transformery look and makes everything look super epic. So basically I've just directed Paige to you know, rug up with a, her little jacket and look kind of cute. Um, and then basically did that with all these different angles. And you know, professional models, they know what they're doing. They can take care of the rest. But this is the 100 mil shot I was talking about. You can see this background just spinning, which is awesome. So right now here, I am back on the glide cam with the 16 to 35. Right now it's about 16 millimeters. The key to keeping people in focus on the glide cam, um, we'll cut to the next one. So this is the 35 millimeter. For this shot, I actually used the 1DX face tracking but before I had this with like the GH4 and stuff like that, everyone always asks, how do you keep people in focus or how do you pull focus on the glide cam? And the truth is you don't. So what you actually do is you stay still, you set the focus, and then you ask them to walk at the same speed as you. So when you walk, it's like this, and they're the same distance away. They're obviously going to stay in focus. That's pretty well the secret. Uh, <laughs> just stay the same distance from them. So once again... This is like little sequency kind of thing. So I made sure to get a wide um, showing off the street where we are with Paige and then cut into like a close up on 35 mil um, and then her from behind and her turning around and looking. And once again, 
backlight. You can see her hair's illuminated here. We've got the sun flare coming through. And if you watch the recent LUT pack I uploaded, the color does do a lot. I do bring up the shadows a lot to kind of flatten it out, but I don't really care that this whole sky's blowing out because you're going to be focusing on the model anyway. Once again, backlight, rule of thirds. So all of these shots, uh, the first one was on the wider lens, the 16 to 35, but then both of these were on the, the 50 millimeter. Here we cut to 100 mil macro and basically that was just a black wall with light coming in. So I kind of tried to make it look kind of studio-ish. Back to the 50 millimeter, 1.2 on a glide cam. And you can see the sun's coming from this side. The sun's getting a bit softer now because it's later in the evening, which is perfect. As you can tell, sequencing. So I've got a shot of her face, now a shot of her torso, showing the clothes off and back to her face. And now we come to sunset, which is awesome. Um, I'm exposing for her face and not caring this is blowing out. To have the direction here, I was kind of just sit down in this nice light, just hang out a little bit. I don't know, it's pretty relaxed the way I kind of direct and shoot. It's kind of like, it's like this is the good spot. If you stand here or sit here and do whatever actions, it's gonna look good. I'm gonna do some awesome camera moves. So, you know, you can just hang out, you can look down your shoulder, you can run your hand through your hair, you can smile, you can blink even because of the slow motion, that's all you need. And I think that's why the shoots come out so good because it's not intimidating, it's fun, it's, really relaxed. So this is all 50 mil at 1.2, you can tell by the broker. And then back to the th one, uh, 16 to 35. That's pretty well it guys. I mean, if you have any other questions, just put them down in the comment section and I'll try and answer them. But yeah, I hope I covered quite a lot of things that you guys wanted to know.